Hi everybody. Hey, this is Todd with Todd's Carburetor and Repair. Wanted to show you something today. I've got a 1962 Plymouth Fury in the shop. It belongs to my cousin. Um, it has a 400 Chrysler in it uh, out of a 1977 car. So it's a 1977 Chrysler 400. Um, this, this car is his toy. He likes to take it out on the weekend and everything. Uh, they go to shows with it, and he just has a ball with it. But he had an, an oil, a couple oil leaks on it. Called me, wanted to see if if I'd work on it for him. I said, sure, bring it out. Um, so I'll show you what I found. Okay, everybody, here's the Fury, 62 Plymouth Fury. Um, he brought it in to me thinking that uh, had a couple oil leaks. And uh, get some light on it there for you. It had some oil leaks on it. Uh, valve cover leaking and uh, an oil leak down on the uh, oil pump down in there just below the uh, beside the oil filter um, kind of a slam dunk sort of on the oil leak down by the filter wound up having to replace both of the both of the o-rings there um, it's called the pump cover that that is the bottom part of the pump but it's called the pump cover where the oil filter screws on both of the o-rings there's a big one that goes around the pump itself at the end at the end of the pump and then there's a smaller one i think the big one is around uh, two or three inches in diameter 2.8 and the little one about three quarter inch across uh, and uh, that there is a pressure port and that's on the inside there wound up replacing both of those o-rings replaced the small one first that didn't seem to quite do it. Then we had oil coming from other places. So I replaced both of them. And uh, the new O-rings are about 0 0.089 thick. Um, and the old ones were flattened out. They were, I believe, 0 0.062, 0 0.064. And then uh, I think one was 0.067. So they were about 20 thousandths. Um, smaller diameter than what they should be and, and that's to be expected as old as this engine is if nothing's ever been done with it so that one was uh, a little more of a slam dunk i guess than the valve covers now the valve covers what i wound up doing on those was i called my local napa store and i just got a set of what they call felpro 1612s uh solid rubber and fairly thick uh, a little thicker than the cheaper ones uh, kind of a performance gasket Wound up putting that on and fired it up, and, and within just a few seconds, we were, we were leaking pretty good. Um, uh, they were leaking right down there in the, in the flat spots, especially there at the back, right above, let's see, one, three, five, right above number five cylinder in that little flat spot. And then um, exceptionally... Uh, leaking on each side and then flat spots and then back in the corner back in here uh, they were leaking now on these the, the heads there's really not a lot of room in there on these heads for that oil to flow so that back lower portion is pretty much uh, um, covered in oil soaking in oil there at the back like that um, now when I put I've done hundreds of sets of valve cover gaskets uh, when I put these on, I, I typically use uh, per, uh, Permatex HiTac to attach the gasket to the cover uh, and then just slide them on. And that's what I did on this one. And then the other thing I did too was the, the tin was a little bent where the bolts uh, go on them from being tightened over the years. So I straightened up all the tin uh, and everything and used the HiTac and it just didn't hold. So I wound up getting on the internet and looking and come to find out there's a lot of issues with these not sealing up so uh, you know not wanting to really put a ton of money in it and, and everything like that uh, trying to be cautious as far as what we spent on it what I wound up doing um, I was trying to decide whether to put uh, silicone on the bottom or high tack and I just kind of went for the nuclear option right off the bat this is all stock. There's no valves to be adjusted under there. You don't have to take the cover off all the time. Um, he just kind of goes out and enjoys it. So I kind of did the, what I consider to be the nuclear option. I put high tack on the bottom. I put two coats on the cast iron on the head on each side. 
and then I wound up uh, putting two coats on the gasket, let them sit for about 10 or 15 minutes, and then put them on, uh, tighten them up a little bit, quarter inch drive, uh, nut driver, don't want to go too tight with them. And uh, we just got done running it. I let it sit all morning, about four or five hours, let everything set up, and just fired it up, ran it about 20 minutes, and both of the oil leaks are are not leaking anymore. They're fixed. So for, for those of you guys out there or gals that are kind of struggling with getting these sealed up, um, the high tack does seem to work. Now, the only, the only problem with that issue is, you know, uh, chances are we go to take this off again, we, you know, chances are we're going to tear up the gasket. So, um, you know, if you've got adjustable valves or something underneath that and you need to take them on and off once in a while that probably wouldn't be a viable option but if you don't have to take them off all the time i think this is going to work so all right well this is todd with todd's carburetor and carburetor and repair i hope that helped you today we'll see you next time Bye bye